started a new series over the last uh, this last week. Blake got to introduce it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and what we've decided to do through this time is really just um, take some opportunities midweek to talk, to talk deeper, um, to explore the topic a little further than kind of what we get to on a Sunday morning. Uh, we're not shy on Sundays at Pin Oaks yeah. about, you know, going deep. Right. Uh, but uh, we also know that we leave a lot of meat on the bone. I know you do. Um, I certainly do. I leave a lot of stuff that I, which I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> I was I was watching the clock this past Sunday and was like, oh yeah, there's more I got to leave on the table. Um, but really, like it's the series we started. You can see it behind us on the TV. It's pray first, right? Yeah. And uh, and this is such an important topic. I'd, I'd mentioned at the top of my message that there's 650 passages that deal with prayer. Whether it's it's they talk about pray praying prayer prayed they mention a prayer somebody had and so it's it's a central topic and, and a lot of us pray a lot of us are yeah. praying and I think individually in quiet uh, away from the crowds a lot of people you know pray more than they maybe even realize they mm-hmm. pray um, and so I think prayer is a, is a really important topic I think it's underutilized in the church. I think it's undervalued in our personal lives. Sure. And I think everybody wants to, you know, know more about it, but is scared. They're scared to do it. Mm-hmm. And and I think that to me, I think that's why this series is so important. We start approaching some of the basics of prayer to kind of help equip you. And you know, as we look today, we're going to talk about the model prayer of Jesus that that is written in uh, in Matthew chapter six and. You know, when we start looking at that, it, yeah. it gives us some it gives us some guidance, it gives us some direction. But um, as you kind of put this week, and, and you spent time talking about um, and introducing this series, you you kind of started laying the groundwork. You kind of started throwing out the the basics and and really kind of trying to address the basics of you know what prayer is and really stepping into that as a as a people. And and so I'm, that's what I hope for out of this this time. I hope that we can dive deeper. Hope we can you know, maybe shed some light on some things that might help you pray a little bit better, pray a little bit more, pray with more confidence, be more bold, um, and stop worrying about whether or not you're doing it right. Yeah. Or whether you have the right words or the eloquent words or whatever, you know, because sometimes we'll listen to, um, someone who has a really, uh, vibrant or thriving prayer life and, and they'll pray and we'll think, well, I can't measure up to that. Or I, I don't know how to pray like they know how to pray. And, The reality is that they just started praying one day and they just kept praying. Um, And so while on Sunday mornings, we're going to talk about, we've talked about this past Sunday, the priority of prayer. Right. Um, And then we'll talk about the place, the plan, the power of prayer. And this time together during this kind of midweek devotional um, time, we're we're going to look at some models of of prayer. And so you mentioned we're going to, we're going to do Matthew 6. Um, so, and, and just in case you guys are wondering, all this comes out of this book called pray first. Yeah. Um, you can see the graphic behind us. You know, we, we both have these, we've been going through these books over the last few weeks as he, as, as Blake was preparing to start the series for us. Um, I'll, I'll be coming back this next week with a follow-up message. Um, ready to bring it, but this book is broken down into sections. And so we don't get to cover section two in the time we have. And that's what this is for. Yeah, cover section two. that's what this is going to be. And so it's Pray First by Chris Hodges. Um, but I think let's let's kind of, you think, jump into the scripture passage that we're going to base the model prayer off of today, and then we can kind of dissect it a little well, bit. And maybe, maybe we do this. We just start with prayer. Can Come I do on. it? Yeah. Let's do that. Father God, we just ask that you would uh, teach us. Uh, let your Holy Spirit guide and direct our conversation. God, give us a just a, an ease. God, there's nothing there's nothing difficult about this. It's just the enemy gets into our head and tries to confuse, tries to tries to, to deceive, and as a result, the enemy keeps us quiet. and And I think one of the most important things, God, is that you just teach us to 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 not let not to believe the lie, not to let mm-hmm. the lie in, and to just uh, surrender to who you are and what you want out of us. And one of the things you want most is is you want us talking to you. Uh, and I, I pray that 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 we can lay that foundation here, that we would um, just be brave in in these private moments, in these moments here to to talk and converse and and to give you our heart. <laughs> That's what you want. You want our heart. Yeah. And so I, I pray that you find that over these next few weeks in all your kids, uh, and that ultimately we honor you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right, man. So the model prayer. Right. Come that's on. that's the first one he kind of gives us to look at. And uh, what an appropriate way to start. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I think that the important thing about the model prayer is and he starts with this idea is that it's not so much like 
it's not so much that we need to pray it verb- verbatim. Right. right. It's, it's not a prayer given that you should be praying every day exactly these words. But he said he said in in, the, in chapter six of the book he talked about how it opened his eyes when he realized this was the model prayer is an outline. Yeah. Right. It's an outline of things that we want to include in our prayers, mm-hmm. you know, and we want to work up to and we want to prepare for. We yeah. want to, like, put a little energy and effort towards it. And that's 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 awesome. Like, I think that's really great to to realize you're not having to memorize prayers. Right. That you're just having to like it's giving you guidelines to make your prayers more in depth. It's going to sure. it's going to allow you to go deeper if if that's something that you're craving and where you're at. Yeah. And while this is, you know, it's perfectly fine if, if this is one of the prayers you pray, I, like I, I think, you know, cat out of the bag, rabbit out of the hat, whatever. Uh, it's the Lord's Prayer is is where we get this from. Yeah. Um, and while the Lord's Prayer, I, I mean, I brought it up on Sunday. It's a, it's a beautiful prayer, but it's Jesus, you know, put it out there as a model. So um, why don't why don't we read yeah. this? You want me to want yeah, me to read ahead. it? Go ahead. So it says, I'm going to look behind me because it's on the TV. It says, <laughs> pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is the the ESV version that we're reading from. Um, So it may be a little bit different if someone's using a different version, but this is kind of the the format, right? Pray then like this. And I think that that phrasing that Jesus starts with is, is key pray like this yeah. not exactly these words every single time but pray like this you start use this as a starting well, point yeah, and and in, in reference like you look at communion for instance communion is do this in mm-hmm. remembrance of me mm-hmm. don't do something like this do this in remembrance of me mm-hmm. and that's why we use elements like bread that's why we use elements like like the juice or the wine right. depending on your traditions like this is pray then like this you know this is your outline this is your guide this is the the starting point mm-hmm. right um and I, and I think that's, I think that's, there's power to that. So, you know, learning, like if you don't pray a lot, you know, look at this and think, okay, what are these elements? And that's how the book breaks it down. What are the elements to the model prayer? Yeah. And the first element right off the top is this idea of our father in heaven. It starts with that phrase mm-hmm. and it really starts with that idea of learning how to, to respect the person you're speaking to, right? to understand the person of God. So when you come to God, it can be, it, it can be as comfortable and informal as it needs to be. But it also it also needs to be kind of bathed in that understanding that that this is our God. Like, yeah, He's capable of answering our prayers. He's capable of doing something about the things that we're bringing to Him. So we want to approach Him in the right way. In the right way, and but also with that closeness, like you'd mentioned. So I think of, I think about it like this with with my own children, right? I've got a ten year old. I've got a nineteen month old. Um, as of this recording, you know, if somebody's watching this years in the future. They're going to be <laughs> older than that. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. If somebody's accessing the content, um, hello to the future. Uh, whoever you are. But, uh, you know, I think about it like there's a certain respect that my son needs to have when he talks to me. Um, you know, a yes, sir, or a no, sir answer. You know, he's not going to come up to me. Hey, dude. And I'm not as, I'm not as um, like his best bud. And so he's not going to talk to me the same way he would his best friend. But there's still an intimacy there where he knows he can, he can open up and share with me. And, and I'm, I'm his dad. I'm his daddy. Whatever, how, you know, however you want to phrase that. So there's that level of respect because I am his father, but there's also that level of intimacy mm-hmm. because I am his father right. and I know him so deeply and so well. And I think it's, it's really similar with, with God, right? There is, there's that respect because he's the God of the universe. He is our father. He's worthy of that respect, but there's also intimacy because he is our father and he's created us and knit us together. And he knows us so deeply and so closely it's not like we're talking to, I think he uses this. Um, it's not like we're talking to a judge in a courtroom, right? right. He uses that example at some point in, where there's in this no book. familiarity. Yeah. Right. Or there shouldn't be, <laughs> you don't <laughs> there want there go. to be familiarity in that regard, but you might have it. Who knows? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, but you don't, that, that I get the formality of that. And, and there is, there, there is an implied closeness. I think it's Romans eight fifteen. Yeah. I think we have it on the screen. You know, you read Romans eight fifteen. for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons, mm-hmm. right? By whom we cry, Abba, Father. There's a, there's a very intimate nature to that word, Abba. Yeah. You know, and, and I, in some ways this has kind of been, this has kind of been overcomplicated in the church over time, the depth of the relationship, you know, the complexity or whatever. But look, it, when you when you have a dad who cultivates a relationship with you, you don't have a you don't have a problem coming and, and sharing your day, mm-hmm. talking about the truth, you know what's going on in your life, the struggles you have, um, you know. And I think as parents, one of the greatest joys we have is when our kids willingly engage us, right? 
and and they engage us with hard things that mm-hmm. they're going through. They mm-hmm. engage us with how they're feeling. Um, and our Father in Heaven wants that same kind of closeness with us. He wants that same sense of familiarity about our conversations, right? So don't, I mean, don't overthink it. Just just be natural. I yeah. think it's the most important thing for prayer to start off with. When we read the Our Father part in Heaven, I think there's that. That's one of the most important things. Just be natural. Don't overcomplicate. You know, you don't have to pass a class in order to start praying. You just need to start praying, like yeah, to God, and 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 you do it with an understanding of, man, this is, this is a joy. Yeah, and and if we start, if we wait to start praying until we have the right words to pray, we're never going to start praying. Right. You know what I mean? It's 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 kind of just one of those deals. You just gotta you gotta jump in, and so our Father um, gives us that start of how we should approach God when we pray, and so it's it's starting and and putting him in the right perspective. And um, he he put a, a line in this section Chris Hodges did that I really liked. He said, nothing will determine your relationship with God more than your view of him. If you view him like that judge who is unfamiliar, well, that's what your relationship is going to be like. But if we view him as Abba Father, yeah. like Jesus Christ did, that changes the dynamic of how we approach and enter into that that prayer relationship. Um, and so I think that's, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, the next section, though, he jumps into is the the hallowed be your name. And so it's that idea that we're, we should start with worship. There should be a praise aspect, right? And he kind of describes that hallow isn't a word, right? We, we don't walk around and, and use the word hallow. We're not texting no, like, no, yo, hallow. <laughs> like, it's just, it's not something that's right. out there. So kind of talk us through what, is, what does that mean, hallow? Well, I mean, ultimately he breaks it down into, it's this, it's, it's the act of revering, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's putting someone in the proper place is really what um, hallowing is. So right. putting God's name, we put your name in the right place, Father. Like we are placing it where it belongs. And, and by doing that, what we're, we're, we're ascribing to you what is rightfully yours, right? We're taking away from the power of the world and we're giving you the power you deserve, right? We're worshiping you. We're coming to you. We're crying, Abba Father. We're coming in familiarity. We get access because we are your kids, right? right? We get that comfortableness of being able to come into you. But now when we come into that relationship and we start talking to him and we start communicating with him, it, it's, you know, what, what are the elements? Like, well, okay, I want to worship. I want to I mm-hmm. make sure I'm focusing on, on the who yeah. I'm talking yep. to For right sure. off the bat. Who am I talking to? Well, I'm, I'm talking to God, and what is he? Well, God is all kinds of things, mm-hmm. right? And different parts of his character are going to become important at different places and times in our life. But, but ultimately, you know, it's, he, is, he is the, the creator, the originator yeah. of everything. Right? That's the most important thing. Like I'm worshiping the, the author of all things. Yeah. And therefore I know he can handle anything that I have to bring to him. By the way, isn't that an awesome in kind of awe inspiring moment when, when you think about it, 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 I think it never gets old to me, right? That we have access to call him Abba father and have that closeness. And then when you realize, man, the, 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 the being God that I'm, that I'm calling Abba father is the supreme ruler of the universe of all right things. of all things creator of, of all things he's the one that's seated on the throne like that, that kind of that that idea blows my mind that we get that closeness to the creator of everything in the world um one of the the passages he mentions in this section is, is proverbs eighteen ten, right um and i think it's it's great the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous man runs into it and is safe and it's it's that idea that his name is powerful and it carries authority and that when we trust in his name, we have access to that same authority and power, but it's that authority and power that he has and, the, and um, that makes him worthy of our worship, of, of being revered and being held in an awe-inspiring na- nature. Yeah, and he shows, he shows, guys, he shows himself to us in, and he shows that nature, that strength of, of, of who he is in different ways and we, in the book, it talks about, you know, the author talks about the seven different ways he thinks of God pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's, it's names that Scripture gives our God. He, he talks about him in terms of righteousness. Mm-hmm. You know, he is righteousness. He is a sanctifier. He's, he's a healer. He's a, a banner of victory. Like, he, he's yeah. somebody who celebrates with us, right? He's a shepherd. He cares about us. He's deeply ingrained into the... Like the 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 ups and downs of our lives, he he it ma- those things matter to him, the the joys and the sorrows they matter to him. He's peace and 
and he's provider. Like, you know, today there, there's a lot of people that aren't at peace. Like it, it, it's no loss on me that we're talking about and walking through a series on prayer at this time in the year. Mm-hmm. Um, it may have been a little intentional, right? Um, <laughs> Because we're yeah. gonna, we're all needing a little peace. Yeah. You know, I, I've seen memes and things like, you know, who's tuning into the final episode of Earth today? Like, go across social media, and it's so funny. Like, fi- we've had forty five other presidents before today, and we've survived them all, right? And none of them have managed to destroy the Earth, um, and none of them managed to destroy the United States. And while there might be a lot at stake, um, the Lord is sovereign. Yeah, and and I need to trust in that. When I do. I have peace and I can right. tap into that through prayer. Yeah. I can tap into my God of peace by just, by just talking to him, you know, taking my anxious thoughts, right. Breathing out, exhaling my fears and my worries in his presence and then letting him deal with them. Yeah. And so by the way, we're filming this on election day in case anybody's wondering the context of that. Uh, and then he kind of ends the section and I highlighted this. It's, it's great. God doesn't need to be reminded of who he is. Right. We yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we come and say, hallowed be thy name, right? And, and lift God up and, and put him in the proper place. It's to remind us who God is, right? God knows who he is. Mm-hmm. He, he very well knows that he's the creator of everything. And it's just us reminding ourselves, right? Which is the heart of worship. Yeah. It, it's putting God back where he properly belongs. That's the heart of what worship is 